Hey, and thank you for joining. Today, I'm going to show you a quick overview of the startup ecosystem template. First, when you arrive on the template, you have this dashboard, but you also have two other pages. Startup ecosystem is where you can manage all your projects in a dashboard style. Then you have navigation, a page that contains all the databases. It's quite handy because you can access them in Notion's navigation bar. Finally, you have the instructions page with detailed instructions for each page and databases. The main need here is a dashboard where you have linked views of all your main databases. If we start with this first section where you have projects, meetings, and tasks, you can see that for each database, you have multiple views. For projects, we have ongoing, per team, Kanban, Gantt, which is a timeline view. You also have a view for costs associated with the project. Then for meetings, you have the newest to oldest view, this week view, and this month's view, using the calendar. For tasks, same thing, we have ongoing, Kanban, per project, per owner, calendar, this week, etc. Feel free to use the views that you prefer. I'm sure you won't use all of the different views. It's normal, but maybe play around with them a little bit and then decide which one you prefer and which one you need to delete. A lot of these databases are linked together. For example, when you click on a project, you can see that the project is automatically linked with tasks and meeting notes. This is done thanks to self-referential filtering, which enables you to see the associated tasks and meetings of a project you have. You also have different properties. You can see the number of late tasks for this project because of the relation with the tasks database. You can see the completion, which also depends on the number of completed tasks. Project status, the teams that are working on the project, the number of hours worked, etc. You can also see the project benefits. It is automatically calculated thanks to the team costs, additional costs, and project income. All of this data is aggregated from the tasks database. Here, as you can see, there's an Upwork web designer that has worked on the project for $3,500. This is counted in the additional costs, total costs, and the project benefits. Project income is a relation property that is linked to the income database. And so all of this gives you the total project benefits for each project. The hourly rates come from the team database. Each member can input how many hours they worked on each tasks, and then everything is automatically calculated. The hourly rate can be changed or added in the properties here. If we come back to tasks, you can see another interesting thing, the lateness formula. It will automatically tell you how many days are left or late, depending on the deadline and the status of the task. If the status is completed, it'll be green, but if it's not completed, depending on the deadline, if it's before or after today, it'll give you this little indication, which is quite handy. You can also find all your archive tasks here. You can archive tasks using the checkbox here. For meetings, it's going to be up to you to create templates because every team has a different ways of working. But basically, here you can add all your meeting content, so things like a memo, meeting notes, next steps. This database is also linked to the project's database, so you can access them here. You can also use Notion's AI properties, like the summary, to get a summary of the meeting. In the other properties, you can input different things like the client, projects, teams, participants, and all of this is going to be retrieved into other databases. Now if we go to this section, we have OKRs, Objectives and Key Results. Here on the right, you have your objectives, so you can add different objectives per team, and you can assign team leads. Here are the objectives for Q3 2023. I think it's a good idea to have different views for different quarters. And so for each objective, you decide some key results, which are in this database here. Progress in objective depends on the progress of the key results. It's like an aggregation of the key results progress. Key results progress here depends on the initial value, current value, and target value. Here our goal is to have our page load under 2 seconds. The target value is 2 seconds, and we were initially at 2.8 seconds. Currently, we're at 2.1 seconds. So our progress so far is 84%. 
In the key results, you can also assign the leads, teams, and quarters. All of this data will be retrieved in the objectives database using rollups. For key results, you have different views like per team or timeline. Use whatever you prefer. Then for the last section, we have the crew and the teams. Each team is composed of different people in a company, so you can assign all these people to different teams, and then when you click on teams, you can see all the teammates, the manager, and the size of the team. You can assign projects or key results directly from here if you want. If you go to the dev section here, you can see all the linked databases, still using self-referential filtering, so you can have access to projects, meeting notes, key results. All of these are only the project's key results and meetings from the dev team. It's quite the same thing here for the crew. You have different views, headshots, managers, or it's only the team managers. And here, if you want you can add a new team member. If you could click on any profile, you will find all their related tasks, meetings, and key results. Each person can open this in full page and this acts like a personal dashboards. If I'm Jibril, I can simply click the star button here and it'll add this page as favorites in Notion, which means I will find it here at the very top of my sidebar. This is super helpful, because when you log into Notion, the first thing you'll see is this. And so you'll see your ongoing tasks, your different meetings, and key results. So yeah, it's like automatic personal dashboard. Then you have the navigation page that you can find here. I told you there are three pages. Navigation is just the page that contains all the databases and other different pages. You will find exactly the same views here. There are two pages that we haven't seen so far. First is finance. Here, you have the income and the expense database that you can fill up whenever you have new income or expenses. You can also link them to the project's database if you want to add income to project or add additional costs to project. And these two databases are linked to the month's database here. Here you can see that for July, your total income is calculated. Same for expenses, and it also calculates your balance, which is the difference between income and expenses. And for each month, you can find the associated income and expenses here, and each month is also associated with a year. Here it's associated with 2023. Now, for invoice, if you go here, you can create a new invoice, and you can use the template which is enabled by default here. Here I created a new one for Meta. If I click on it, you can see that you have all of this that is automatically added. All you have to do is to, in the template, change your information, and then you only have to update the client info, the items, and the price. You can share the invoice to your client by clicking the share button here, publish and publish to web, then sending the link to your client. Again, there are different properties here that you can fill out, like client, project, total price, etc. I think that's it for the overview. Of course, there are detailed written instructions for each of the databases and some of the common questions like how to set it up, subtasks, how to archive and the different templates. I hope you found this helpful. Feel free to send me an email if you have any questions. Have a great Notion Day!